Raising teenagers is hard. Understatement of the century. This is Mentor Select. Mentor Select. Parenting teens to be successful adults. Mentor Select serves parents who are raising teens. Every week, Derrich interviews leading experts that work with teens, educators, counselors, mentors, and authors to give you practical tips, strategies, and resources that you can incorporate immediately to better connect and understand your teen. All while parenting them to be successful adults, focusing on social and emotional development, something that's left out of the classroom, but not in ours. Be sure to subscribe, share, and rate. This is Mentor Select, and this is your host, Derrick Phillips. Okay, parents, you're already in for a real treat today. We have Molly Smith, who's one of the committee organizers for the Young Men Service League. How are you, Molly? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. We're really interested in learning a lot more about Young Men Service League. What is Young Men Service League? Yeah, so Young Men's Service League is a nonprofit organization that um, promotes uh, community um, development, leadership skills, and mother-son relationships um, in, in kids who are in boys who are um, in high school and starts in the ninth grade. Um, you can join in the 10th grade, but um, this organization provides opportunities to um, get mothers and sons out in the community serving together. Oh, wow. That is awesome. Yeah, it is. So how long have you been involved? This is our first year in YMSL. Um, We are in the Legacy Chapter in Plano, Texas, but there are 94 chapters across 15 states and over um, 8,000 young men um, are involved with um, YMSL today. Wow. Nationwide, huh? Yes, it is. Yes. It's really cool. So what's been your experience so far? You know, I, you know, I got involved in YMSL um, because raiding teenagers is no joke. Um, <laughs> and especially teenage boys. I was just looking for an opportunity to get more engaged with my son. You know, when they're, you know, 10, 11, 12, they still love mom. They're still chatty. <laughs> chatty. Um, and then they hit like 13 and like middle school and, and you become uncool. And, you know, they start talking more to their friends and they're talking to you. So I wanted just an opportunity to spend time with my son, Grayson, okay. um, who is now 16. And it's been incredible. So there are a couple of different components to YMSL. There's what we call philanthropies. So these are service opportunities in the community. And each chapter really organizes its own philanthropies. And there are lots of philanthropies that multiple chapters serve in, but you've got to serve so many hours. So we have to serve 30 hours together this year. Uh, and throughout the Metroplex. And then we also have um, meetings, monthly meetings, where the boys are learning things about, you know, leadership skills and life skills, um, everything from how to dress for homecoming to how to be a better public speaker. You know, so there's really great content for the boys to um, be exposed to and that they're going to need throughout their life. Right. Certainly. And I actually was just speaking at a YMSL meeting yesterday, and one of the one of the life skills they covered was how how to iron a shirt. Yeah, they were like, "Wow, that's cool!" It's, it's, yeah. I learned some stuff because you can imagine how many teens graduate from high school they don't know how to iron, they don't know how to wash yeah. the clothes. That's right. <laughs> those life skills. So that's it's really right. Cool that the organization is is, t- is teaching those things. Yeah. So, in, you know, I mean, a couple of a couple of things that we've done this year that have been so impactful um, is we spent um, one of our boys meetings, so one of our monthly meetings where all the boys um, come together um, at the Plano Police Department. Okay. And we got a tour of the jail and we talked about, you know, DUIs and how that's so how it's so common and um, got to actually go back in the jail and go through what it was like to be processed, (laughs) you know? So, I mean, and that's really, I was eye opening for the moms um, who were there, but for the boys too, I mean, it was, it was very eye opening um, to really see, okay, behind the curtain, like how, how these things happen and what that experience is like. Um, Kind of a good deterrent actually. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) But yeah, Yeah, so we've done some really, we've done some really great things. Um, They got to see firsthand. It's not glamorous. (laughs) It's it's not at all. And it's funny you mentioned that as far as it being a deterrent, 
when I was in seventh grade, I was certainly heading down the wrong path, a knucklehead. And because of that, I was selected as one of the kids that went on a field trip to the Lake County Jail. They took a group of us. Oh, yeah. It was our school's version of the Scare Straight program. That's right. <laughs> and and, and it a, worked, didn't it? Didn't it was it? a major deterrent for me. Like yeah. I realized, like, okay, if I continue making these bad decisions, then I'm going to end up in a, in a prison. And I yeah. knew I wasn't built for a place like that. Like, no, That's right. I, I enjoy my freedom. And it really was an eye opener. And I can proudly say I've never been arrested. <laughs> it was a great, yeah. great experience. It was great for the boys. Then maybe, then maybe we'll see it from a tourist standpoint where they're touring the jail versus them actually being booked for a DUI. That's exactly right. You know, like, all right, this is enough. <laughs> I, I, I get yeah. the message. <laughs> yes, exactly. Now with, with, you know, our boys are now starting to drive and all of that. Right. It was just, it was really good to really, you know, just reinforce their consequences. Exactly. <laughs> behaviors so yeah it's yeah. one thing seeing it on tv but a whole another thing actually seeing it in person so that's yeah. that's wonderful yeah. now you mentioned uh, you and your son grayson had to serve for 30 uh, community service hours this year yeah yeah so how has that helped you all connect now being out there in the community serving together well i'll tell you so each in each philanthropy that we've served in this year, it has um, it's been a little bit different experience. One of the um, one of the philanthropies that we love serving in is called Bed Start, and, and that's another nonprofit organization that collects beds and furniture and household goods and distributes it to people in need um, okay. all over the Metroplex. And so. Um, one of the key things that we have learned or I have seen in Grayson as he's experienced this is, um, you know, going down into the not so great parts of Dallas and setting up, you know, in a one bedroom apartment, setting up two beds in the bedroom, you know, and like actually assembling them, um, assembling a, you know, a bed for the living room, right? Because you've got four or five people in this one bedroom apartment. They all get wow. beds, they all get new sheets. And then we're setting up, you know, uh, couches and love seats and, and, you know, um, and just to see, you know, this family of five living in this, you know, one bedroom apartment and we're coming around them. And like in this particular instance, this family have lost, um, everything, um, due to an apartment fire. And so they were referred to Bed Start through the Red Cross. And so we came around to provide, you know, all of the bedding and the sheets and the household goods and the furniture and everything that they need to kind of get back on their feet in a time when their life is just upside down. Right. Um, and, you know, it is just kind of a, it's a, it's a great look into not everybody has it, um, everything that they need you know, at a finger at, at a moment's notice, you know, they don't, there is need in the Metroplex, there is need in our community. And um, it really has opened his eyes to see, hey, A, I got it pretty good, number right. one. <laughs> and number number two, I can make a difference by spending a couple of hours on a Saturday morning, collecting things and distributing it and giving them to people in need. Um, just really um, developing that kind of servant's heart, um, which as a parent of a teenage boy, we all like, I know I'm sure every parent's desire is to have um, a way to instill that in their son. Um, and so that has been really amazing to see um, that really develop in Grayson and to say like, yeah, mom, that was kind of a scary part of town. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, these people, these people lost everything um, right. and, and we get to spend some time giving them, you know, some things to get back on their feet. Yeah, that you, that is an invaluable experience and just yeah. providing that insight because I'm sure it's, it's one thing as parents you're telling Grayson that, hey, not everyone has what we have. There are people who, yeah, they don't have a lot and they're yeah. struggling, but to see it firsthand and then be able to provide assistance and serve them. Wow. You can't yeah. think of a, a better way to teach that lesson to drive it home. But then also going back to the time that you and your son are spending together, connecting and bonding in a situation yeah. that you normally probably wouldn't not have. Yeah. I'll tell you, you know, and it's been, you know, so that was, we've served at Bed Start a couple of times, um, but most recently we went to the Plano community home and said, like this is a home in, in the east part of Plano 
where um, you know folks who are elderly come together um, like once a month on a Saturday night to play bingo. And okay. so these are people who are, you know, live, you know, in these kind of, there are little kind of mini apartments, but these f- folks need community. You know, they need, they need community. They need outreach. They need connection. And um, our YMSL boys came around and we facilitated bingo for them. I gotta <laughs> tell you, like that was a hoot, right. you know? So, I mean, it's just, there are people, there are people on the margins, in the margins, in our communities that need everything on from the spectrum of, hey, I've been devastated by a natural disaster or something to that effect to we just need companionship and community and fun. Right. Um, and it's all service. Um, it's yeah. all in service to the people in the community. And so um, there are lots of different ways to serve through Young Men's Service League uh, when you're in when you're in a local chapter. Yeah. And it's just a it's just eye opening and it just creates moments, teachable moments um, with a teenager um, that sometimes you don't get, you know, they're hard. It's hard to get those, um, but you definitely have lots of opportunity for those um, yeah. in volunteering at YMSL. S- certainly. And you're right. Bingo can be a lot of fun. I, uh, a couple <laughs> years ago for a Veterans Day, I went to the VA hospital and we facilitated bingo and it was wow, they were competitive. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. I love that phrase you said people in the margins, on the yeah. margins. Yeah. That's, that's great for young men to see, to also the, the people that don't have a lot, and then also people who, elderly people. I can't forget about our yeah. elders. So, yes. have, to be able to have them to interact with elders outside of their grandparents is, is really cool. Now, for the say the mothers listening now who have teenage sons, they're thinking, "Hey, I will, this YMSL sounds great. Yeah. How can they get involved?" So one of the things that is um, so with YMSL, you do have to be sponsored into YMSL um, by somebody who's in a chapter. So, but there are loads of chapters, so there is a way to reach out um, to say, "Hey, I'm interested," um, and to try to get a sponsorship into the program. Um, it happens for. Um, boys who are going into ninth grade or going into 10th grade. Those are your entry points into YMSL. So if you have, um, if you have a seventh grader or an eighth grader, now is the time, or if you have an eighth grader, now is the time to be reaching out to your local YMSL chapter um, to get more information. Um, so that, that is, that's the best way to do it. They do in the, the YMSL year starts in um, May. So it's May 1 through April 30, um, okay. is the YMSL year. Yeah. Uh, uh, very cool. Awesome. Yeah. I didn't know you had to be sponsored, but like I say, it can parents will start being proactive now and reaching out yes. to the many chapters. Yes. It's certainly just the, the short time I've been around the, the YMSL chapters has been, uh, yeah, to see how it can transform the relationships that the sons have with their mothers and just also just, just provides value for everyone involved. It's, it's, it's a yes. great organization. Yes. Agreed. You mentioned something earlier in terms of one of the reasons you wanted to get involved was just find a better way to connect with Grayson. Like I say, mm-hmm. once they become teens, that's, that's a common complaint that parents have is, Hey, they don't communicate with me anymore. They just talk to their friends or they're on the phone all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, what are some ways that you already mentioned some ways in terms of volunteering? What are some other ways you realize that YMSL has helped you better communicate with your son? Yeah, you know, so um, each boy um, in YMSL has a leadership role, um, and so does each mom um, okay. ha- has to serve. And so a lot of times like Grayson is in um, the philanthropy committee. And so he has to be part of the regular boys meetings where they are highlighting a philanthropy. So working with him on, you know, let's think through, let's think through which philanthropies have we, have we served and that you can get up in a meeting and talk about so that others know, Hey, this is a really great opportunity. Um, This is what was fun about it. This is what was impactful about it. And so prepping for that, I think has been, um, has been really helpful um, in terms of just opening up lines of communication because there's preparation. It doesn't just go and serve like Everybody has a role. Everybody has yeah. a leadership role um, to keep their um, grades, um, 
their grade level group um, moving forward. And so that has been really um, impactful Wow, for us as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that because that's a common complaint I hear from teens where they feel they don't have a voice. They don't, they feel like yeah. they're not empowered. And by having them be in leadership roles, mm-hmm. it empowers them. It gives them a voice and it makes yeah. them feel like what they're doing is important. Yeah. And there's a sense of ownership there too. Yeah, big time. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing I love about the leadership roles with the meetings I've attended is it helps them develop their public speaking skills. Yes. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I've got, I don't know, I've got a 16-year-old introvert. So that is a, um, a scary notion, having to get up and speak um, right. about, you know, whether it's a philanthropy or, you know, I'm... I work with the boys, the leadership committee um, on our boys team. So we have to come up with, okay, what is the leadership quality that we can highlight? What are good examples of it? Where are some challenges around it? Um, But having to prepare and, you know, be able to step into, you know, a meeting and speak about a particular topic. I mean, it's just good. It's just good skills. And, you know, you would think today in schools that there's, more opportunities to do that. Um, YMSL is one of those places where Grayson has had to prepare. He's had to get up and he's had to speak, um, even just for you know a few minutes about a particular philanthropy. Um, right. So that has been. Um, it's super uncomfortable for him. I wouldn't say like he's nailed public speaking in any way, shape, or form, but has exposed him to leadership, um, to speaking, um, to serving in a really kind of a different way. Right. That's very important because being a leader, you have to be able to communicate your message. And especially during those teen years, they outside of sports, they don't really have a lot of opportunities to practice their public communication skills. So I think that's wonderful. And being an introvert can be a phase. I know for me, I was certainly an introvert as a teen. And I didn't really discover my voice or get comfortable with public speaking until my 30s. So it's uh, me in my 40s. Me in <laughs> your my 40s. 40s. Okay, yeah. so you understand. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> and I think someone definitely can be a hybrid. I'm still an introvert in certain situations, but it's a skill that you can build. And the more you develop it, the more comfortable you'll be. So them starting now and right. YMSL, is, that's wonderful. I love it. It's yeah. giving them a lot of advantages that they'll be able to use in the future. Agreed. And, agreed, agreed. Indeed. So... As far as with you being around, how many boys are in your chapter? Oh, in our chapter? Oh, um, definitely over 100. We have about 18 uh, or 20. We have one of the smaller classes um, in our, the 10th graders this year, some of the smaller classes. We have about 18 kids in our class, Um, but the other classes are are, are quite a bit larger. And we're from all over. You know, we're in the, uh, we're a West Plano chapter, uh, the Legacy chapter, but we're based in Allen. We've got people based in Frisco. So we have people from all over. Um, And yeah, yeah. So certainly that gives you some insight into just what what teens are dealing with in general. What are some challenges that you um, either just hear about or they talk about that they're dealing with? Oh, gosh. I think, um, you know, the demands of school, like the demands of school for sure. Um, And then, you know, as at least in our house, you know, what we've experienced is, you know, boys are wanting more freedom as they're getting older. And so it's weighing, it's weighing that, um, the giving more responsibility, um, taking on more responsibility, um, and just the accountability. Um, that is a, that is a, um, we're on the struggle bus in our house. I'll just be, you know, really (laughs) honest, really honest about that. Um, you know, wanting to, um, give Grayson more freedom, um, but with that becomes more accountability. Right. And so, you know, YMSL is a place for him to kind of flex his muscles in terms of, you know, taking on a little bit more responsibility, taking on a leadership role, um, getting his eyes open to the need in our community. Um, but um, and it's helping shape his character, you know, right. um, it's so it's like I said earlier, like raising teenage boys is no joke. Um, it's not for the, it's not for the faint of heart. Um, and so, you know, any opportunity that I can get grasp onto that will help 
shape his character um, and help prepare him to be, you know, a functioning, you know, successful, whatever success means to, right. to him, adult, but just to be equipped to, you know, launch out into the world, you know? Absolutely. And it's, as you mentioned, it's just that character development is so important and, yeah. and it's often overlooked because of course, and I, it's really, I look at character is what they're learning and character and life skills is what they're learning outside of the classroom. So outside of the academics, okay. The character development is just as important because we see so many yes. high profile cases where people who didn't have good character, who didn't have, have that, poor, what I call poor character, how it yeah. costs them everything. So if right. you really want to start developing that as early as possible and definitely doing those teen years, it's, yes. it's vital. Uh, Agreed. Ab- absolutely. Now, you mentioned, too, the importance of balancing that the freedom with accountability. I think that's something really imp- important to highlight for the parents because, yeah, especially with teen boys, we I, I know when I was a teen, very reckless and immature in a lot of ways. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. with, with that freedom, we yeah, certainly have to balance that accountability, to keep us <laughs> from harming ourselves or others. Definitely. So what, what are some strategies that um, within, within your household and also within YMSL where you all some strategies, effective strategies for balancing that freedom and accountability? Yeah. So I'll, I'll tell you that, you know, um, at least in our house, we try to just be very open from a communication standpoint, always. Even I was just telling Grayson last week, I'm like struggling with some classes and it's like, listen, I'm not trying to get on you. I'm not trying to make your life miserable. I genuinely want to figure out what is going on with this particular situation. So let's talk about it. Like we're going to lean in. We're not going to shy away. Um, And, you know, your aloofness or you know, he, because he's so introverted, like we're not just because you're not, you know, engaging here in this particular area, we're not, we're not going to let it go because we care about you. We want the best for you. And so that's why we're leaning in and we're, and we're having these conversations, you know, from a YMSL standpoint, I mean, he is accountable to the other kids on his little subcommittee that he's on, as well as the mom who's organizing that, right? Um, Because with every meeting, you know, every single committee, every single boys, um, every single boy is on a subcommittee that has a role in the actual monthly meeting. And so there is, there's planning, there's accountability, um, there's a chance for leadership and to lean into that. And so, um, uh, there are a few reminders here and there to say, okay, hey, did your mentor mom reach out to you about this next meeting? What are you presenting on? Um, so that we've got, um, we've got, and we're imparting, you know, those life skills, those, those, you know, information about philanthropies, um, leadership qualities, and that type of thing, um, so that everybody can learn and everybody can grow. Awesome. Yeah, that's definitely some good strategies that, yeah, parents can implement today. <laughs> yes. Just, yeah. Uh, certainly. And I love to mention that just the open communication is very important to just keep those lines of communication open, even when maybe the teens are just feel like the parents may feel like they're shutting down or they're closing them off. But yeah, you know, I have to still hey, keep keep at it. <laughs> the stakes are too high. To just uh, Agreed. To not, no, no, no doubt about it. Now. With other boys within your chapter, what are some, maybe some some growth that you've identified in other boys since they started YMSL? This is our first year in YMSL. Um, mm-hmm. So, but I will say that um, I can see I can see boys who other boys in our group who are introverted um, taking a step out. Even when we were even when we were doing our our public speaking meeting, you know, there weren't a whole lot of volunteers, but <laughs> I could tell, you know, to get up and, and, and start talking. I think there are a couple of jokesters in there um, who, you know, really thrive off of, um, you know, getting up and speaking and that type of thing. But people are right. stepping outside their comfort zones. Right. Um, and that's, you know, it's a safe place to do that. Um, and um, it's, it's a good opportunity for them to to step out, to do something maybe that they're not as familiar with doing or not as comfortable um, because it is a little bit smaller setting um, to to do that in. Um, And so, um, you know, people really stepping outside their comfort zones, growing um, their skills and and talking through 
um, you know, some of these things that we talked through with life skills and leadership attributes and, um, and that type of thing. Yeah, that was a lot of fun doing the table topics and like I say the <laughs> ones that volunteered. <laughs> it was like full of tea for a moment, yeah. but yeah, we had yeah. some of them to say, hey, I'm going to do it. And that's the first step. And it's really so important right. to the experience that discomfort, then you realize that, Hey, it's not really that bad. <laughs> like what's the worst that right. happened? Right. I, was, I was really proud of all the ones who volunteered and you know, stepped outside their comfort zone. Cause that's, yeah. that's something important, but it takes a lot of courage. That's, yeah, it does. It takes a lot of courage. <laughs> I still don't like doing impromptu speaking, but Hey, yeah, me you know, either. <laughs> it's not my favorite. But it's definitely, yeah. I, I usually tell myself, Whenever I feel like that discomfort or feel like I want to just by default say no to an opportunity because it's di- it's outside of my comfort zone, then by default I have to say yes. <laughs> and I, I've, right. started, I've started doing that and this led to so many opportunities that I've never imagined. Yeah. That certainly is the key. Well, Molly, you've given us a lot of great insight into YMSL. It certainly is a, I know firsthand, it's a wonderful organization and I hope yeah. the parents listening, the moms listening explore joining getting sponsored you say that seventh eighth grade year is a great time to be proactive start reaching out yes to the local chapters to get sponsorship now molly is there anything else you want to share with us about ymsl before we close out this interview you know i just i I can't say enough about you know getting out into the community and and volunteering um with ymsl it's, it's a great program um but even if you're not in ymsl just finding finding an organization to go spend time with your teenage son um you're forging a different type of relationship when you do that so don't miss out on an opportunity um to do it yeah priceless opportunity and parents don't just drop your kids off and say go volunteer yeah. <laughs> Mom, go, go with them cuz like you mentioned right. you're, you're forging a different connection relationship with your with your teen sons and yeah, that's priceless. Yeah, it really is. And one thing if I've experienced through volunteering is I get more when I give to others. It's just that experience that you get. It's, it's you can't even explain it. It's such a natural high. Just knowing you're doing something good and yeah, you, the impact you're making and you realize the people you're serving are actually giving more to you in, in return through that, the feeling. <laughs> yes. Agreed. Can't explain agreed. It. Well, definitely. Thanks a lot, Molly. We really appreciate it. Certainly gave us a lot of great information, some great strategies. And like you mentioned, it's, it's tough raising teen boys. But, <laughs> yeah, <it is. laughs> there's, re- there's resources out there. I say it takes a there village. Is. So it does. Let YMSL be part of your village, parents. That's right. Thanks and, for having me. Thank you, Molly. You've been listening to Mentor Select. Mentor Select. Parenting teens to be successful adults. Hosted by Derrick Phillips. Raising teenagers is hard. Understatement of the century. We get it. That's why Derrick interviews leading experts that work with teens, educators, counselors, mentors, and authors to give you practical tips, strategies, and resources that you can incorporate immediately to better connect and understand your teen. That's why we do the show. Be sure to share Mentor Select with other parents of teens. Follow us on social media at Mentor Select to stay up to date on the latest tips, strategies, and resources for parenting teens. Send your questions and comments to Derrick at MentorSelect.com. Tune in every Wednesday for new episodes. Till next time, this is Mentor Select. Mentor Select.